stare at this image for five seconds. And without realizing it, the photoreceptors at the back of your eyes will start to become fatigued. So much so that when this image turns white, you see the green birds as red and the red background as green. All of this happens because of biological processes in your eyes that link you to the lives of pollinating insects, can help you design bedrooms or rooms in your house to be more satisfying, and can also explain why women can see better than men. Seeing color is so frickin' cool, it kind of mixes science with sensation. And over millions of years, our eyes have evolved to see wavelengths on the electromagnetic spectrum roughly between 380 nanometers to around 700 nanometers. That's it. Wavelengths longer than this, you get into radio waves and microwaves, which our eyes cannot see, but they can send a text. Wavelengths shorter than this, you get into UV rays and gamma rays. Again, your eyes cannot see, but they can damage your cells and cause cancer. But if we hone in on the wavelengths of color, there are specific patterns that our eyes pick up. Most people see less than 450 nanometers as violet, 450 to 485 nanometers as blue, 500 to 550 nanometers as green, 570 to 590 nanometers as yellow, 590 to 625 nanometers, you got gold, 625 nanometers and above you get red. Now, no object actually possesses any color, which is so weird to say. All an object does is absorb certain wavelengths of light and then reflect others. For example, this gorgeous teal seafoam coral blue is absorbing all the colors except for that seafoam teal gorgeous blue, which is being reflected to your eye and your brain is interpreting this as color. For example, if you're looking at one of my favorite flowers, the goldenrod, which blooms in August, the flowers are absorbing every wavelength of light except for the ones between 590 to 625 nanometers. Again, as we said earlier, which most people see as gold. This light is sent to your cornea, which bends it towards the pupil that controls the amount of light hitting the lens, which focuses the wavelengths onto the back of your eye called the retina. At the back of your eye, the retina is covered in photoreceptor cells called cones. You have around 6 million cone cells which absorb light and pass it onto the brain's visual cortex to be interpreted as color. This is a biological process that's happening all the time. You're looking at this screen, I'm looking at this blue sky, you're looking at me, I'm looking at you, and oh, this is a connection, my friends. Now your cone cells at the back of your eye are divided into three different types. You got red cone cells, green cone cells, and blue cone cells, RGB. Since you have three types, you are visually trichromatic. So you can walk around, order your coffee, and say, by the way, you and me, we're trichromatic. Some other animals, for example, are tetrachromatic and can even see within the UV wavelengths some birds, some fish, which I'm sorry, are cooler than us. That's a rad thing to do. They are superheroes. We are measly trichromats. Sit down, folks, because this science is complicated. But the red cone, optimal for perceiving the color red. The blue cone, optimal for perceiving the color blue. And you guessed it, the green cone, optimal for perceiving the color green. But these cells work in combination for you to see over 10 million different colors. Unless you're 12% of women who can see way more than that, more on that later. But the nature of these cone cells are what create complementary colors that we perceive as satisfying. Now a complement is something that lacks a hole. So for example, this circle is a complement of this rectangle with a missing section. Together, they make a hole. That's a hole, W-H-O-L-E, not a hole like here, 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 or a couple down here. If I showed you the ones down here, we'd be on a different tube site. Ding. According to the physics of light, a complementary color for your eye are two colors that when combined produce white light. It's a law of nature, it's fascinating, it's why we have complementary colors for our eyes, and it has to do with how our cones work. Look at this black and white image. If we put on the complementary colors of the original picture and you stare at this dot for a few seconds, due to the specific stimulus on your eye, the background we used, and the perception of your red, green, and blue cone receptors, when we put back this black and white image, you see the color. I do this all the time just for fun. I'm like, gosh dang it, my eyes and brain are insane. The reason that this happens is because your eyes are so sensitive to these wavelengths that the cones become overused and oversaturated when looking at the same color. The stimulus can start to spread to other cones nearby, and when the stimulus is taken away, the tired cones and your visual cortex default to seeing the complementary colors. This is why we love looking at complementary colors beside each other. They have energetic reciprocity. Going back to this image, when staring at the green, your 
green and blue cone cells become fatigued, but the red isn't really being used in these sections. So when you switch to white, your brain reads these sections as red. The red cones start to trigger your brain to see red. It's all just about perception. It's wild because it's like through these two little things that I'm seeing everything and living my life. Purple and gold are a reciprocal pair that our trichromatic eyes and the eyes of bees see very similarly. Golden rod and purple asters grow together so that bees find them attractive and this increases their pollination. These flowers evolved to grow together to help pollination with bees. They weren't for us, but because of the energetic reciprocity of our cones being similar to that of bees, we get to reap the benefits of this energetic beauty. When looking at flowers, when you see gold and you see purple and it feels good, Thank the bees. When designing a room, take a look at this light complementary color wheel. If you focus on the complements of each other throughout your room, you're gonna be designing pleasing scenarios for the cones of your eye. This can really help you make decisions about how you're gonna design your room. Just think about the physiology of your freaking brain. Now for men, seeing color can be more of an issue. This is because the genes that encode red and green cones show high sequence homology on the X chromosome. So although gender and sex can fall on a spectrum, for the most part, people who identify as women women have XX chromosomes, and people who identify as men have XY chromosomes. And it's this Y chromosome, for people like me who have a Y chromosome, we are more likely to not be able to see red and green as well. This is why statistically men are much more likely to be colorblind. But on top of this, there's a lot of new research, but it is starting to be found out that 12% of women are actually tetrachromats. They have an extra cone and can see a hundred times more color than the rest of us. I got into a rabbit hole of all this research after being in nature and just looking at all these beautiful colors that were so soothing to my eye, my brain, my perception, and it almost just was like, what is beauty? <laughs> Science has a hard time defining beauty. You know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But when you look at these complementary light color wheels, you start to realize there are some things we can do in our lives to better understand the physics of light, our eyes and our brain, and utilize this thinking to benefit our lives. Essentially, this is just a video enticing you to get out there and of course, stop and smell the flowers, but also stop and look at those flowers. <laughs> Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and they are giving a free one month premium membership of Skillshare to the first 1,000 people who click the link below. So you gotta click it fast, people. Skillshare is an online learning community where you can learn new things from the safety and comfort of your own home. My biggest passion in life is learning and Skillshare is a huge asset to me. I cannot recommend Skillshare enough. This video exists because I was spending more time in nature because of a Skillshare course called Urban Nature Journaling, seven days of artistic prompts. Essentially, what it taught me to do was look around at nature in a new way. It's a beautiful course that honestly kind of changed my life and my perspective of the city that I live in. It also got me journaling, which has made me feel better. Essentially, Skillshare literally changed my life. <laughs> Again, it's an online learning community with tons of new classes, great for curious people who wanna feel inspired. They're also always updating new premium classes, so depending on what your interests are, you can find something for you. Skillshare is dedicated to learning, so lucky for you, for me, there are no ads. So again, be one of the first thousand people to click the link below and you'll get a free Skillshare premium membership for one month. Also, by clicking this link, you're able to help our show here at ASAP Science. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week for a new science video.